on it. Yeah, you <laughs> six cents for it. Hey, um, talk a little bit about the the DSO and what's going on because that's front yeah. page news. Um, you're playing with the DSO and this is going to be a big fundraiser for them. I mean, they got to be kissing your ass big time. <laughs> this man is going to raise them a lot of money. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna raise them a million dollars. So. Um, the one thing, show, the, one you know. One show. I was talking to Gary Graff, and he brought it up. He goes, "What if it? I I, I don't anticipate it selling out because tickets are so expensive. The lowest tickets like 150 bucks, you know. And that's you know usually when I do our VIP things like at Comerica, we have a little bit of a number that's like 300 bucks or something. But you know you get a jersey and you get this entrance and bathrooms and all this stuff. And I mean tickets go up to like 1500, and that's out of my. You know, but this is how we got to scale it to play at the Fox to raise this type of money, which is what they need. They were trying to come up with the extra million bucks. I just get off stage in Kentucky, in Louisville, and I was having a couple bourbons with um, Fred No. We had just toured the Jim Beam factory, you know, which I got to deal with. And so we were over there, we were having a good time. And all of a sudden, I get this three alarm phone call at like midnight when I'm feeling pretty good. And it's Pat McGinnis, who's Dan Gilbert's right hand guy, you know, saying, you know, Dan's freaking out right now and he's trying to negotiate this deal with the DSO and he came up with this idea, would you play a concert, you know, and we can raise him a million dollars in one night and I'm like, yeah, man, let's do it. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I'm like, uh, for who? What, what is it? <laughs> the next day, like, yeah, you agreed to play with an orchestra. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that Jim Beam is good stuff. Um, well, I, I, you know, I'm, glad, I'm glad I did. So I think the tickets, I think they're on sale um, Saturday and you know, who knows? I guess if it sells out, we could talk about a second show and maybe I'd put some money in my foundation to be able to do some more good stuff around the city and whatnot. But, uh, you know, it should be interesting. It should be fun to be able to play with the seven. I've, I've played one thing I did at Carnegie Hall years ago where I played, I actually played picture and this famous conductor, Marvin Hemlish was conducting and, uh, and then I ended up doing Zeppelin rock and roll, <laughs> which is complete mind, um, F. Yeah. yeah, mind F and, uh, but you know this will be cool, man. Something great for the city again, and I think it'd be a unique way too to enjoy your music. I mean, I think it'd be really cool. You yeah. don't you don't have strings on a lot of your songs. No, I think one so song. Who's gonna one put song? all those arrangements together? Will you sit with them? This, and this guy Rob Mathis. He's a. Uh, I've worked at him with the uh, stuff I've done at the Kennedy Center Honors. Uh -huh, those yeah. things they do every year. I've worked with him a few times. This thing we just did for the four living presidents he, he he put together an arrangement and stuff so and he's done a lot of people and i really like the guy you know i've worked from three or four times so he's gonna put all the charts together mm -hmm. we'll get together and rehearse it and it'll kind of be a i don't think it is you know no i don't think anybody's really gonna know what's gonna happen until the lights actually go on and this is the final thing I how much time do you get to rehearse it I think one day, one, one, one time. Once? Oh, once? brother. But Ooh, I mean, boy. remember, these people aren't rock guitar players. They actually know how to read music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So as long as they have somebody who so doesn't knock over their stand, they're, they're ready to go. Uh, tell me and my band will be fine as long as you keep that, you know, that evil sheet music away from us. <laughs> hey, um, Shem mentioned that the DSO concert on sale 10 a.m. Saturday. Uh, Ticketmaster.com. So Saturday at 10 a.m., get uh, tickets for that. You really don't think you have enough people to, to sell that thing out? Easy. No, I, I think I think we'll I think we'll sell it out, but man, it's a lot of money. It's yeah. not it's not cheap. You know, there's a lot of seats that are, you know, hundreds of dollars, and that's for one ticket. So, well, the DSO you know, can sell some of them. You know, you can take your old ladies. You know, figure you want to get a couple of decent seats, six, seven hundred bucks, man. That's yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, expensive. That's a chunk of change, to think yeah. that's not a lot of loot. But uh, yeah. but the DSO will sell some too. I mean, yep. they have real loyal, loyal following. That'll be a really I cool think a thing. I a lot of people want to do it because it's a good thing for a culture institution here in Detroit. And yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure we'll do all right with it. Um, I want to see the show. I, I just think that's going to be a really unique way to see your music perform. Well, I think it'll be really good. I mean, yeah. I'm, trust me, I'm just as interested. <laughs> <laughs> Are you curious, excited, uh, nervous? I'm excited, but it's also a lot of pressure. You know, it, yeah. it, it, you know, I'm not bitching, but it is a lot of work. It's I know a lot so of work you're that's just... gone into just working this out to have it done and try to keep it done the right way. You know, the logistics that go into it is just crazy. And now we haven't even, you know, we have, this is before we even get to the music. Yeah. Well, I noticed you're just coming off that Kid Rock cruise. <laughs> you go right into this thing. Uh -huh. I go from the cruise to rehab to the, <laughs> to the DSO event. That'll be the, that'll be the chain of events. Cruise, rehab, DSO. <laughs>